I know it's the last talk of the day. I want to make sure that you're awake, you're with me. First thing I want to do is make sure that the sound is working. All right. It's okay. I am from Mexico. It's okay for me to use mariachi music. It is not offensive. Uh, so, so you are sort of with me. But, uh, to make sure that you're with me, I want to give you like a little bit of an amuse bush, if you will, uh, mixing puppies and heavy metal. <laughs> Enough of that. Hello. Um, it is a pleasure uh, to be here at Typographics, and I have a lot of stuff to show you, so I'm going to go really quick and get straight into it. As uh, Alexander mentioned, I am here to talk to you about branding, a branding conference for branding designers. That's the title that you've seen on the website. That's the title on your program. But as I was preparing this uh, presentation, oh, wait. Ah. As I was preparing this presentation, I realized that a more appropriate or al alternate title would be Nine Times Typography Saved My Ass. Uh, and that's actually, I, I think that's going to be my epitaph on my tombstone. I'm just going to say Typography Saved His Ass, M dash, multiple times. Uh, and the reason why that is is that I am, I am not an illustrator. I, am, I cannot even letter to save myself. I don't think I'm that creative or that concep conceptual. But when it comes to typography, I can uh, choose it, I can rearrange it, and I can make it do things that otherwise would not allow, it's the only way that I can make a living. So typography has saved my ass multiple times, but I'm gonna show you nine times that it has done so. Before I do that, I'm, uh, a little bit of a background, uh, specifically about uh, the brand new conference. The shorthand for it is BNConf. I put that up because you're gonna see that shorthand multiple times. So the brand new conference is a direct extension of the brand new blog, which I started back in 2006, has gone through numerous iterations over, over the years, but the premise has remained the same, which is writing opinions on uh, uh, logo and identity redesigns or new logo and identity introductions by uh, well-known companies, products or services that you might recognize. Um, and the opinions are mostly written by myself. Uh, for a while we used to have guest authors, but that didn't work out. So over the last 13 years, I have written over 6,000 opinions on logos and identities, which is a stupid way to spend your life, but that's where, that's where I, I ended up. Um, and this is the most recent version of the blog. Nowadays, we include a little bit more content, but the premise has remained exactly the same. We don't talk about music, we don't talk about posters, we don't talk about books, just logo identity, redesigns, or new designs. And um, that has made it a fairly popular blog. It now has 2.1 million page views a month, which I'm not up here to brag about. But again, the fact that it's such a narrow uh, focus that has gather, garnered it so much attention is kind of like mind blowing to me. Um, for, so the brand new conference, uh, we, didn't, we did not start it as some sort of altruistic or entrepreneurial initiative. It was just, we needed to survive. Uh, the, we did the first one in 2010. So after the 2008 recession, we were shit out of luck with design work. We had no clients. Uh, up until that point, all of our design work had come from word of mouth and referrals. So when we needed to go out and look for clients, we had no idea how to do it. So we're like, all right, we need to figure out some other way to do it. So we put all of our savings, most of our savings, into launching a conference thinking that, well, if uh, low identity and branding works so well for a blog, maybe it will work as well for a conference if we keep the focus just to that low identity and branding. So 2010, uh, one-day conference here in New York at the School of Visual Arts Theater. Uh, I think it fits 415 people or 450, I can remember. Uh, we sold out. Uh, the audience loved it. Speakers enjoyed it. Sponsors appreciated it. We loved it. Uh, we made our money back. Then we, made it, we even turned a profit and we're like, oh yeah, that's awesome. Let's uh, see uh, how we can keep uh, growing it. So for the next three years, we kept it the same. Uh, one day conference for about 400 people, single day, uh, you know, single track, everybody experiences the same thing. Uh, in 2014, we went to Chicago. We turned it into a two-day conference. 750 people showed up. We we're like, yay, we survived. Two days is as hard as one day, so let's just keep going uh, with two days. Uh, two-day conference. Oh, um, easy there, fella. Uh, 
<laughs> in 2016, we took the conference to Nashville. A thousand people came. We're like, awesome, people will travel to the conference. And that has sort of become our, uh, both our comfort zone as well as, a, as it's challenging enough uh, to do one uh, two-day conference with, for a thousand people. And uh, the conference is uh, all done by me and my partner uh, and wife, uh, Bryony Gomez Palacio. And uh, yeah, someone is a fan of Bryony, as am I, as I should be. Um, because we spend all of our time together. We work from home 24-7 uh, together. She's actually watching right now, hi, with my kids, so I'm not supposed to drop F-bombs, and I'll do my best, but who knows. Um, so uh, I guess there's only the two of us. Uh, uh, we work from home. It's awesome. So uh, nine times typography has saved my ass. I'm going to start uh, with the first one, obviously. I'm going to take you through all nine. Uh, and one thing that's important to understand is that uh, much like this conference was a typography conference for typography users and type designers, uh, and you can't just like half-ass the design. Since uh, in our case, it's uh, you know we're designing an identity for a conference about identity for identity designers, and on top of that, I run a blog where I make critiques, positive and negative, of other people's work. So we really have to walk the walk the walk as much as we talk the talk. So. Uh, 2010, being our first conference, we we're like, oh, let's just take it easy, see what happens. Chose a typeface, Climax by Andre, Bjorn, uh, Andre Jobs for uh, Tipo Tech. Uh, put it in some pretty colors, more pretty colors. The most exciting thing that we did was uh, we trimmed the C and the O so that it wouldn't do that, see that thing. So instead, we'll do that just to match the counter spaces of the, of the lovely font and as well as the leading. So, you know, attention to detail. Uh, we made some swag, one color of swag, it was fine, uh, got the job done, uh, good for us, we survived. San Francisco, 2011, for no reason whatsoever, we wanted to emulate sign painting. Uh, we realized, oh, we don't know how to do sign painting, so we found uh, this guy, he, that's not his face, that's a gift, uh, but just to protect his identity, uh, let's call him, uh, I don't know, Jack, John, Joe, whatever. Um, and he turns out that he does sign painting. So we said, hey, John, Jack, Joe, whatever, can you sign paint all these things for us? And he said, yeah, sure. And he, made, he sent us like, these really big sheets that we had to cut up and uh, put into the scanner to clean up and make into actually usable assets for the conference. And this was the main reason why we went to you to do sign painting for those nines. We love those nines and point ninety five. Um, and so he also uh, sign painted all the speaker names, companies, and where they came from. And we sort of realized that uh, Joe, Jack, John, whatever his name is, may, he was maybe not the best sign painter as evidenced by San Francisco. We started San Francisco. <laughs> He, like, he just gave up. Like, he, he couldn't quite bring uh, so What we realized is that whenever he his sign painting got small, he just couldn't do it. It was only when he would, had like, the full brush stroke. So, yeah, our fault. Um, so we put that into a website, made the program, uh, paired it with uh, Proxima Nova, and made some swag that, uh, that is not advancing. There we go. Uh, and it's good that it's not advancing, because this is my least favorite identity. It has numbers, whatever. Don't, don't matter, it gets better from here. New York 2012, uh, we started to uh, play with trends. And one of the trends at the time was the uh, heavy use of Gotham by Heffler and Perry Jones at the time. And uh, kind of like the bold geometric sensor. If, and at the time, there was also this trend of heavy patterning, like not just patterns, but like really heavy ornate patterning. So uh, we kind of like built our own very strict, very geometric uh, letters. And then each of those letters is divided in a square grid and a concentric circle grid. Yeah, you can see that here. Good. Um, and then we use those, uh, that grid to make it, uh, make it into little pieces. And we, then we colorize those pieces. And then we thought, yeah, that's cool. Uh, let's keep going. Let's say, oh, uh, let's build the whole title. We current the E and the W because we're not assholes. Like, we want to take care of our people. So we current the E and the W to do that because it's important. Again, attention to detail. Um, so we arrived at that, and we thought, cool, that's, that's patterny enough, but can it be more patterny? So we thought, can we include logos into those little pieces? And like, yeah, we could if we wanted to get sued by every single company that we included in here. So we realized, okay, we cannot use the Apple logo, but we can use the leaf in the Apple logo to make a pattern. We can't use the FedEx logo, but we can use the arrow in the FedEx logo. If I just blew someone's mind, get out. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you know, if that was going to work, people were going to be like, what do you mean? 
Um, anyway, so you can't use the UPS logo, but we can use the ribbon in the UPS logo to make a pattern. So we made the, we used the elements from 12 different logos, and then we kind of like shoved those inside the texture that you can't quite see here, but up close, you can see the patterns in there. And again, it, it wasn't, you shouldn't be, it, the idea wasn't that you would look at the type like, oh, that's the leaf from the Apple logo. It was just to create texture, but at least have a reason why we were doing so much texture. Put that on the website. This was the first time that we did a little bit more of an ambitious uh, program. This is a big format program with a purple paper and clear foil, red stitching on the spine, really nice and pretty. We did a poster that you can't see for shit here. <laughs> and that was sort of the purpose. Uh, it was a clear foil with blind letter press, and it was those letters and the textures and all that. And uh, we actually uh, it won the best of show at the Type Letters Club annual a few years ago. So well done, Armin. Um, yeah, so it was a nice uh, treat to have that, but moving on. Uh, New York 2013, still playing off of uh, trends. Uh, now you might remember like this X device that people were using in their logos. Uh, and it didn't matter what the logo was for. It could be for a bakery, it could be for a hairdresser. Uh, it, it was had X and those little things and type and uh, do that and very finicky. And if you're wondering, the trend is alive and well. This is taken yesterday uh, the over here at Nicer for, a, for a, uh, what is it? Uh, Taylor. So there you go. It works for everything. So we thought, all right, can we take that X and make something more uncomfortable, like take it to the other extreme and still making it pretty and designy and cool, just make it really kind of like awful in a way. So we were trying to find a way to shove the B, the N, the C, and the 13 into those uh, spaces of the X and all like still within those uh, kind of like invisible um, triangles in there. And we ended up with these four logos that are kind of like uncomfortable and ugly. And like, yeah, you succeeded at that. You know, so yeah, that's ugly as shit. But that was the point. It was the, the point wasn't to make something cool and pretty, but just to actually take that trend of the X to a weird extreme. So once we had those four different logos that uh, with the letters rotating around the X, then we thought, oh, we can use those uh, different pl uh, places on the program. And you might look at that photo and be like, oh, cool, you printed the logo in different uh, places, but no, those are hand sewn into a, a grid of laser cut circles that then, you know, looks like this, uh, finished up close. So we, this was, uh, we're still doing a 500 person conf uh, attendee conference, so kind of like sort of easy enough to hand sew, uh, and I can say easy because I didn't do shit, my wife did everything. Uh, one thing that you have to understand is that, I, like I do most of the computer stuff, and she's the mastermind behind all the manual labor that, you, that, we'll do, that we do, and that you'll see through uh, the next uh, identity. So, uh, what that does uh, is that you can have the logo anywhere on the cover, because it's basically a pixel grid, uh, and the logo uh, 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 adheres to the pixel grid in any place that, that you put it on. Uh, we did the same thing for the podium, where it's uh, just a pegboard that we got from Home Depot, painted it yellow, and, all right, come on now. Come on, no? All right, uh, let me just move in here, see what's going on. All right, uh, I might come back to the center, so keep the lights there. <laughs> Let's see if it's, yeah, now it's unlocked. All right, so uh, kind of like also hand sewn uh, on the pegboard. Uh, Chicago 2014, now we started to play with the idea of uh, referencing the city where we're going to host the conference. So um, Chicago, uh, we're like, oh, you know, remember the original Mac? It had a set of uh, bitmap typefaces that were all named after cities, one of them being Chicago. And then it was also redrawn in 1991 uh, by Bigelow and Holmes when the Mac was able to render curves. So we thought there was something interesting about mixing those two things, but just using the font Chicago for a conference in Chicago was pretty a dumb idea. Um, so we kind of like tried to figure out what else can we build into the identity to make it more interesting. So another interesting thing about Chicago is that it has a significant stock exchange, and we really like the density of the boards of the stock exchange and the modularity of them. And kind of like still playing off the idea of the trends. A trend at the time was wiggles. And there's nothing conceptual about it. It's just putting wiggles on things. And so it was really stupid. We're like, hey, that's kind of cute. So let's see uh, what we can do. So combining both Chicago versions with our own wiggles and squiggles and weird stuff, we started creating this modular uh, kind of like alphabet um, system that we could mix and match. And it would always read 2014 brand new conference as you rearranged it and 
came on too fast for my uh, little uh, clicker. Damn it, damn it. All right. Unlock it. Yeah, 2015 brand new conference. And then we build that into a pattern that we use on the website. That same pattern we put into, I think my, yeah, there we go, yeah. <laughs> they told me don't stand behind the column. Yeah, you can see me. Uh, <laughs> all right, so uh, we use that for the tote bag. I think my, fine, I'll stay here, fine. You win, stupid clicker. All right, um, so we use that in the tote bag as well as in the program for, um, you, know, you can see the black, you can't really see the back, black background wheel here, but it has a spot gloss varnish. It has those uh, white things or a sticker that you can place at different heights of the program. So we'll always read 2014 brand new conference. Uh, new York 2015, uh, we wanted to reference kind of like the grittiness of uh, 1970s New York with the use of graffiti and kind of like how dirty it used to be. So we chose um, uh, Tripper Pro from uh, underwear and we thought, well, it, it's fine to use a stencil font, but let's actu actually use the stencil, fo stencil font as it, as it was meant to be used and actually use it as a stencil. So anytime we would use Tripper Pro, it would have to be uh, uh, spray painted by hand. Um, another element that we wanted to include in the identity was this other side of New York, like the opulence, the luxury, how much money you need to live in New, in New York at a certain lifestyle. So we wanted to reference, we referenced that to the use of, uh, so we paired that with uh, Obsidian from uh, Heffler & Co, which is kind of like this really elegant, really luxurious uh, uh, typeface that created that contrast that you can see in, in New York nowadays, or even uh, contrasting 1970 New York to 2019 New York. Um, so all the company names for all the speakers were, uh, oh, sorry, uh, were hand paint, were spray painted by hand. Um, th then that gave us one element to use in the identity. And then, so that was easy, that we scanned those, put them in the computer, it was fine. Uh, but for the programs, we wanted to spray paint each program by hand. At this point, we are we're already at a thousand people, so we had to spray paint a shitload of covers. Uh, and the way to do that, yeah, tricked you, yeah? The lights were coming on, it's not working anymore, so I'm gonna stick to here. Uh, I just like to roam, I feel more connected to you that way. Uh, so we came up with these uh, stations that allowed, uh, allowed us to spray paint, put in uh, the, the covers, spray paint each one by hand. We had six different designs um, that we, and then four different co colors of paper. So we did like uh, 1,500 of these because eventually 500 just went to the trash between the going to the printer and the binder and the other printer. Uh, but in the end, we had those printed, painted covers on top we put gold foil. So again, the idea of contrasting the grittiness of spray paint with the classiness of gold foil and four different color papers, four different designs, just like really yummy stuff. Um, the tote bags were also spray painted and those were finished off with a gold silk screen. The name badges were little pieces of wood, spray painted, finish off uh, with gold sill screen. And again, those things are just like, you can't fake the, that, those textures with any sort of printing method. But so we went ahead and literally spray painted the shit out of everything in our conference. We didn't spray paint Polish air out of respect, but otherwise, you know, we just, we just had kept going with those stencil spray painting people. Uh, all right, Nashville 2016. Uh, one of the great things about Nashville is uh, the um, country music and an even greater thing are the suits that some of those country singers wear uh, that are, uh, have this ornate uh, floral elements and uh, uh, birds and butterflies and all kinds of pretty stuff and rhinestones, like real rhinestones worth money. Uh, so there was that element and then there was also, you know, hat show print is there, you know, had a great tradition of uh, wood type uh, printing. So we went out and tried to find the wood typiest wood type that we could find, and that turned out to be Behemoth by House Industries, um, because it was like, the, the, it had the biggest slabs, it had the biggest surface that we could then draw our own patterns on top of it. And uh, so we did that for each of the B and C, O and F, and then like, you know, in my mind, like it, when the lights go down on stage, that's what happens. Um, so, you know, kind of like going back to the idea of wood type, we actually wanted to make wood type. These are like four foot, uh, four foot high letters that we did almost the old fashioned way with, a, with an actual, uh, with a CNC router. 
uh, may the C, may the F, these, all the other ones, of course, right, and have orders of all of them. Uh, transfer the, desi the designs onto them using chalk. Um, again, that's uh, Brian e paint, hand painting each one of them, then me taking photos, so yeah, yay me. Uh -huh. But yeah, they, so this is uh, on our kitchen counter. Sometimes we had to choose between dinner or letters. Um, most often than not, it was uh, the letters one. And this is the size relationship uh, in relation to our king size bed. Um, <laughs> and like the, like the country suit, like the suits that they have the rhinestones and the glitter, we wanted our letters to also gl to glitter as well. Mm -hmm. So we took them out with uh, just Christmas lights from like the dollar store. Um, and then they, we could set to different uh, uh, poses. And from the back, it's like super ghetto. Uh, <laughs> but uh, from the front, like when the, and we set it to like a nice low pulsing. Uh, uh, timing and it just looked beautiful on screen and with the dark light, it looked great. All right, two more. Uh, 2017 Chicago. Uh, if you, you've either walked by it, you've seen it in pictures, the bean or officially the cloud gate by Anish Kapoor. Uh, and what we love about this sculpture is how it distorts what's around it, what's underneath it, what's to its sides. So we thought, okay, that's one thing that we want to reference this year. And the other thing was like the grid of downtown Chicago that's as lovely as the grid of New York. Uh, yes, yours is better, whatever, Chicago, Second City, I get you. Um, but what, what we liked too was just like the the arteries that come into that downtown Chicago. And we thought that torque by type supply uh, sort of uh, encompass those two things, the gridness and then the angle. So, you know, just an excuse to, shoot, to use a cool typeface. Um, so well, having that in mind, we applied the bean filter to it, which is not really a thing. Um, we actually worked with a Three Bear Studio and they helped us do some animations that then we could use on the website that we use on uh, uh, the, the, during the day of the event as well. I'm just gonna let that play for a little bit while I drink some water and I give my clicker the evil eye. So we had those uh, you know, kind of like motion applications but then we were also able to grab stills and do uh, the swag. And this was uh, an actual, a, a very fantastic reflective fabric that we found in China. Uh, you can't find stuff like this in the US. It probably, probably has some, uh, um, you know, it's probably illegal in the US, but no, it was fine. Uh, so we still screened those with uh, black ink, blue ink. Um, it was a really reflective fabric, which is insane. Uh, and then the, the badges were all in this like static free uh, little bags that usually have the, the RAM in them. Um, and we actually still screened those ourselves because no silk print printer wanted to do it because they said, no, it's too small, no, it's too slippery, no, it's too tight to the edges. And we're like, yes, it is all of those things. And we're still gonna figure out how to do it. So for the first time, it, was in, it turned out pretty good. Um, and then the, the program is just torque blind uh, debossed on, the, on, the, on another reflective uh, paper. And what was great, and we didn't plan this, people then went out to the bean because the venue was like right behind the, or in front of the bean. So people went and took pictures with the reflective stuff, which we thought was awesome. Last one, um, New York 2018. So that was last year. Uh, we wanted to use concrete, so we like that was our thing. We knew we wanted to use concrete, so we sort of retrofitted the concept to be about concrete. So uh, New York is a concrete jungle, which is a, kind of a cliche, but hey, it has concrete, the word concrete in it. So what makes New York the concrete jungle? It is the buildings. What makes some of the buildings uh, cool are inscriptions like this. What, are, what is cool about some of these inscriptions is that they use high contrast sensory typefaces and so we thought let's go out and find a family of um, a, su a suite of different uh, high contrast sensory uh, typefaces and build the identity out of that. Uh, we use CHAP as the main uh, uh, typeface and then what's cool about this is the recessed uh, type in the concrete so we wanted to replicate that so we started testing molds seeing if we can put that on, a, on the program that we give out to the attendees and like, yeah, we can do that. And as, can we do the badges as well? How thick is too thick? How thin is too thin? And after many, many tests, we figured out what kinds of molds to do, uh, what kind of concrete to use, uh, how much we had to dry. Well, those are the, pro the programs. Uh, this is for the badges. 
Um, so we had to do like a, you know, 1,100, 1,200 of these things. We gave little cubes as mementos to each attendee. Um, so those are that. And then in the end, you know, you have the, those are actual uh, concrete covers uh, glued on a piece of on the program. Uh, and they're all different because the concrete reacts in different ways to the environment and to humidity and to whatever mood the concrete is in. Uh, and it has all these amazing imperfections that just give it this really amazing texture. Um, those are the badges. Um, and again, you look at it up close and you, you can, well, it's almost like those uh, pictures um, that I showed earlier. And by the way, some of those pictures of buildings uh, were uh, by Paul Shaw. So shout out to Paul Shaw and his amazing uh, New York touring stuff. Uh, the little cubes, the cubes stack more freely and a close up of that. So um, in aggregate, uh, when you look at all, when you look at all of that, we hope that uh, that you see that you know these nine identities reflect how we use typography, which is a combination of a number of approaches, sometimes on their own, sometimes in combination, and they range and they range from uh, making unorthodox choices to uh, exploring techniques, embracing complexity, giving ugliness a chance, building systems, going analog honoring the past, distorting reality, and most importantly for us, is never backing down. Thank you. <laughs>